This podcast represents the opinions of our hosts and guests. The content here should not be taken as medical advice and is for informational purposes only. This podcast also does not establish a standard of care, doctor-patient, or client relationship. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any statements or opinions made on the podcast or website. And because each person is so unique, all listeners are encouraged to connect with counseling and medical professionals for assistance with their personal journey. All people, places, and scenarios mentioned in the podcast have been changed to protect the privacy of those involved. You're listening to the We're Not Fine podcast with Doug Jensen and Dr. Talia Jackson. Welcome back. We are back again. Hello, everybody. Oh, have we missed you guys? And I, I have some news. What's your news, Greg? As you remember, in our previous episode, we talked about the question, the poll question, can you date someone <laughs> after dating their mother, father, brother, or sister? Oh Is gosh. it possible? And the people, Doug, have spoken. Oh, my gosh. I'm dying to hear what people have to say. How many people are we? Don't even tell me. I know are what the poll is going to indicate. What do, what, what do you think the poll is going to indicate, Doug? Just I, believe, us. I believe that overall, especially, you know, I don't know who these poll participants are, but I think overall people are um, vulnerable <laughs> uh-huh. and have some fear around those uh-huh. issues uh-huh. and don't really know until they're in the situation what it would be like. And so the natural tendency is to say, oh, no, I would never do something uncomfortable like that. So I think by and large, my guess is that the pollsters, despite that there's some stragglers like myself who say never say never, because I think the human condition is so variable from person to person and situation to situation um, and I would date both a brother and a sister from the same family. I'm... <laughs> I so like, yes, I th- go ahead. I like how you've hedged your bets and you're almost taking a Trump-esque approach of just saying oh, no. any, anyone that would vote against me doesn't really know how they're voting or how they really feel. <laughs> I'm not questioning that's exactly, the integrity of people's votes. That's exactly yes, the approach. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean this, though, like, I think our world, like, unless you're in a situation, I think you'd be like, I would never do that. And then sometimes people have found themselves in a situation. That's the other poll I would take. Have you ever found yourself in a situation you never thought you'd be in? And I think most people would say, fuck, yeah, I've there is how did I get here? Right. Some truth to that. So I can can agree that like oftentimes we would say I would absolutely never do that. And then you find yourself madly in love with someone that's right has skeletons in the closet or like the dad of the girl that you were dating. You're all of a sudden in love with him. I'm kidding. That's, that's that, a little extreme. That, you know, it could happen. Maybe not Thank quite you, as often. Talia, that's Although a I openness. still feel that by and large, I have spoken for the people. The question was, can you date someone after dating their mother, father, brother, sister? And resoundingly, 43% said, yes, love is love. But 57% wow. said, no, it's too weird. But that, to, the, to me, to feels the 40, like 50-50, practically. Thank like, you, Talia. Was, I'm like, what? to the 43%, <laughs> I want to say thank you for your openness, your mindfulness, your openness to the world of possibilities. And to the 43%, Not, I might say, can we have a conversation about that? <laughs> and really, like, like take and, that into the future and picture what that might look like for you? And to the 57%. I would say, don't live in fear, (laughs) live in openness, open yourself up to love, open your heart and your mind to new possibilities and take a deep breath. And to the 43%, there may be a production team contacting you for a new reality TV (laughs) show called (laughs) I Dated Your Mom. I'm in. Oh my God. I'm in. I'm hireable. I think that should be a new show. Greg, thank you for the feedback on the poll, and thank you for bringing it up. I'm actually very intrigued by it. It's not surprising, but it's pretty good. I also love polls. I like it. I love all of it. Can polls be our new thing? That was really fun. Yeah, we can throw a poll in. I'd like a poll or two. 
I'd also like a pole, like a literal pole. I just I don't knew, even know what I'd do with I it. I just but. knew you were going to bring it there. Yeah. Well, pole means a lot of things. Should we kind of talk about all the ways that pole is used in our language? You mean in a, in a derogatory slang comment on people from Poland? <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. Boy, Greg, you go there so quickly. Do we need to talk about that? <laughs> well, anyway. All right. So <laughs> let's move on to our mailbag for today. I Are you ready bring for this? It. What do yeah. we have? This Always was, ready. This was, this was a pretty short question, but I think it's packing a punch. So you, I'm sure you both will have a lot to say on it. We've been together a year and a half and we're doing fine overall, but I don't have previous experience with serious relationships. So I don't know what the right thing to feel is. I know I should validate my feelings, but I hate feeling so sensitive. Where's the line between, I don't want to hold grudges. I should just forgive. And this really bothers me and I have to talk about it. But that's a pretty deep punch right, right there. That's a deep punch, but I already know the answer. But we have to know the issue. What are the grudges about? I don't need to know the issue. There, but... were, there were no issues um, pre presented. Oh. It was just an overall. Like, it was, oh, that, that's literally that's it. it? That's literally it. I'm so excited by that question. So I don't know if anyone knows that I believe in communication, direct and <laughs> open communication. You? It's a, I know it's a, it's totally off my typical game, but I'll tell you that I think this about grudges, by the way, I know so many people in my personal life and professional life who have had grudges. I have them as well. Like I, I, there are just deal breakers about friendships and about dates and about family members. I have, I have deal breakers because if I'm always, always on edge around that person, I can't do it. It just doesn't work very well. Like I always have myself kind of uh, holding back or not trusting that relationship. And for me, and I will speak for me, I need trust in my friendships. I need trust in my intimate relationships. I need trust in my family relationships. And if I don't have them, I have to talk about it. And I've I have talked openly and honestly with all of my friends or family members or dates or intimate partners with uh, any issues I have. And it's not always an easy conversation, but here's the deal. That grudge really impacts your ability to connect to that person and to be present. And there's so many people who go around the face of the earth engaging with people for whom they can't be themselves because they don't have a trusting, secure attachment. And this is what I'm going to say about that because... You know, when we talk about attachments and we talk about anxious attachments, you know, that that just kind of precludes that, you know, aside from your your attachment style that you might carry with you more pervasively. The reality is, I think people oftentimes with grudges engage with people and then walk away from those situations feeling heavy, emotional, unresolved. I don't know why we would walk the face of the earth unresolved with people. And I know there are different circumstances, like Talia, even your question about like, what are the circumstances surrounding this? I don't know that it matters. I think you have to be able to say, I felt this when you did this and have an honest conversation about that so that you can free up that relationship. How, how sad it is to engage. I would, I would want everyone in my life who has a grudge with me or an issue, which of course they've had, like, please let me know. And I'll, I'll decide what I want to do with that on my end. And, but hear you out. Beautiful. I love, I love this conversation. Yeah. It's such a good conversation. Okay. So I was thinking that it does matter what it's about, even just to know what are we talking? Like, is it just that I actually, I don't know the gender of anybody. Like if the, whoever that was, if their partner was um, chewing too loudly or like always leaving the shoes in front of the front door or, you know, things that may feel like microaggressions to somebody, but it's really their own sensory stuff or whatever that is, or they feel disrespected, but they're holding grudges. <clears throat> and Oftentimes people leave those things unresolved. Doug, yeah. you asked such a good question because they're really confrontation avoidant. They're really worried that if they bring it up, it's going to be a huge fight, which is going to put them into fight or flight, or they're worried about abandonment. But I also completely agree. You need to have these conversations because if, if your partner knew how upsetting these things are to you, there are two options, right? Like you've spoken your truth. And then your partner is either like, meh, whatever. And then the grudge might fester and we can talk about that. But if you speak your truth 
and your partner is really open to the possibility of like, oh, I'm going to be more aware of that. I don't have to do that. I can come up with ways to be better in this area for you. Then that's beautiful. Problem resolved. And they may take five, six, seven, fifty tries to get it right. Right. I mean, we are creatures of habit and clearly whatever that was that bothered you was not in this person's awareness. So having a little bit of grace or it might be. around it yeah. or it might be, right? It might be. And you know, I think the thing, and this is the worry about not bringing it up. I mean, I agree with you, Talia, that I think conflict avoidance is a very common experience, but the problem with that is twofold. I mean, one is then you have this energy inside about this and you're living with that stress. And right. the goal is to not live with stress in this life for many, many different reasons. It is a better way of living to not have that type of stress. There can be other good forms of stress, but this isn't one of them. I think the part that I'm struck by is I think most people kind of walk away from those relationships. They just kind of walk away because it's so uncomfortable and they can't tolerate the interaction that makes them feel that way. But here's the deal. If you address something directly, if you tell somebody, you know, I was really hurt by this or I was really disappointed by this or this. And especially now in this day and age where we have really different opinions about vaccines or politics or human rights or whatever it might be. Um, I, I really feel like there's there's strain kind of everywhere in our culture right now. We have the most divisive culture I know I've ever lived in. So when you have people in your life who like inherently are, are different in their values, if you don't address it, again, the tendency to ghost or to move away from those relationships is high. But I think we don't know what relationships we have with people until we give it a shot. Like so we're I not say, giving them a chance that's to right. show up. And what they do say is that an apology without change is just manipulation, right? And so it's like sometimes if people don't want to bring something up, then they start to feel like a doormat, but they're exactly what you said, Doug. They're not giving their partner a chance to step up. Partner or a friend or family member or whoever it is. And I think the other part of this is when you let somebody know, I actually recently had strong feelings uh, about a friendship of mine and I, I let this person know. And the conversation was outstanding. So it actually strengthened our connection. Mm. It strengthened our relationship versus I think if I held on to it, I would have been just kind of like avoiding. And I'm, and I'm not a good avoider, by the way, as, the as best, I'm sure that's surprising. That's like the best case scenario is like a giving our friends and our partners a chance to step yep. up and join us in like a more real conversation. Because if we're holding on to the grudge, it just it makes us feel really alone. And just like Doug was saying, we don't feel like we can truly connect with this person anymore. There's something yeah. like a dark cloud over our head. And we often ask ourselves in these situations, like, why should I have to tell them? They should already know. Like I already told them once that that bothered me, right? But we also have to remember that it's possible these things aren't on that person's radar or they don't know how serious it is, but the grudge weighs on our soul heavily and it darkens our energy. So forgiveness is really an important thing for us to always be in a practice of forgiveness. But if you're constantly forgiving a person that's hurting you in the same way, that's a problem and that needs to be addressed. I want to go to this comment or this concept of like, if the person says they're sorry and they say they understand, but then there's no change, right? What I think happens oftentimes, I always tell people, let somebody know what isn't working for you. Let somebody know how you feel about their behavior and how it impacts you. And if they don't change, you then have a standard though. You have a, you have a clear boundary that you've put in place. Like this is not acceptable to me and you get to keep going back to it. So if the person keeps doing the same shit to you, what you what you get to do at that point is, do you remember when we talked about that and how that impacted me last time? And so if this continues, this is going to be a problem, right? Because I think the other thing that I encourage everybody to do who has a grudge is to really consider how much effort you're willing to put into that relationship. Because the other thing I think is that we have a lot of people in our lives that do come and go. I mean, I think if you look back at any at your life and depending on how old you are, I think there's inevitably people that come and go from your life based on circumstances, based on, you know, just place things and circumstances in your life, occupationally, familially, whatever. Um, and I think there's a part that you have to evaluate, like how much work do I want to put into this? And there are people who have had grudges that they kind of decide, you know, I don't think this person is someone I'm going to see myself wanting to do that work with. 
or that I want in my life. And sometimes it is about letting go. It is about letting that person know mm -hmm. that I don't want that person in my life anymore because they're not good for me. But what if you can't let go? Like how, how do you, Greg, do you have a personal example for us? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are, you know, that's the, I think that's part of the question here is about, about forgiveness and the, the, you know, how do you, how do you let go? What, what are the things that you can do to move beyond that? So do you mean wanna... let go without an apology? Or with an apology well, and resolution? Yeah, it's, it's two, I don't think it matters. A, there are two people involved, right? And if you know you're not yeah. going to be getting anything back from the other person, how do you um. let go? But here's the deal. And, and I'm, you know, again, communication. So due to some political differences with a couple of my friends, I let them know directly that that was unacceptable to me and I could not tolerate their support of like, for example, laws that discriminate against people like myself. It was very strange for me that friends would do that. And I know politics are about a lot of different things and I'm not just closed minded, but I need to tell people, you know, at the core, if your rights are taken away, you have no idea how significant that is to a lifestyle and satisfaction in this life. So I let go of those friends, but I believe in telling people why I'm removing them from my life. And I did. I let three people know in the last several years I cannot have you in my life based on what you believe and how you talk and what you, how you place your votes, et cetera. And that is, that's my yeah, I mean, experience. that makes so much sense. So it doesn't much sense. to a and lot of people though, like, Talia, right? Like some people well, don't. Well, but there is like the, what you were saying though, the deal breakers, right? Like yeah, there absolutely. are certain cases in which you realize if somebody shows you their true colors, you realize it kind of doesn't matter. Like the other factors don't matter because that particular thing isn't going to work for any kind of friendship or relationship. And in that case, you just have to remember that you are a chooser and not a beggar and that you've got self-respect and that you will attract the people that you are, that are meant for you, that like are good for your nervous system, make you feel loved and valued. Um, and choose that, even if it means initial loneliness with self-respect, I want you to trust that you are going to find your people that are like-minded, that adore you. I agree with that. I think there's a part where, you know, really think about how you feel when you're in that relationship. How do you feel every time you engage? And if you always feel on edge, if you always feel distrusting, if you always feel uncomfortable, don't do that. You know, I think this is so much about, you know, really listening to yourself in your relationships and living the best life you can and surrounding yourself with people who are supportive and loving and kind and regarding to you. It is, I 100% can tell you the better way of living. Whereas if you always have to deal with friction, so Greg, going to your comment, you have to really think about like, how am I in this relationship? What do I experience? And if I don't like it on a consistent, pervasive, chronic way, out. Like it's okay to let go. And it's hard to let go because you have to grieve that. Like anyone we let go of, there's some sadness, there's some anxiety, there's some bargaining. Like, should I just tolerate that person differently? But at the end of the day, everything you said, Talia, about like you get to choose, we get to choose. Yeah who we have in our life. Surround but yourself maybe, with love and kindness and support. I mean, 100%. That's the end goal. And that's aspirational. And that's what we're encouraging and everybody doable. to do. Yep. Yes, it really is. But it takes so much work and self-awareness and then self-love to yeah. just realize yep. who you are and your value and you're going to attract it to you. But it doesn't exactly address, like, what if you happen to be in love with a person and having a really hard time letting go of someone that you really like doesn't make you feel good. I mean, is that where this conversation is kind of heading? Can I talk another half hour about picking people that <laughs> you you're in love with? You get 32 seconds that, to summarize. Okay, that, I'm, I'm a quick talker. I'm really brief, as everyone knows. Um, but I would say, like, if you were in love with somebody or in an, a marriage or a relationship, a committed relationship with someone who does not make you feel loved or regarded, address it. It is not going to go well. And so the question might be, Talia, going to your comment about, like, what if you're in love with a person who constantly makes you feel like you have this grudge or this unresolved issue? Mm -hmm. You know, when couples come into my office, one of my favorite things is to say, I'd like you to make a list of everything that feels unresolved in your past. 
I want to clean mm. the slate so that you can start growing in a different way. And inevitably, people, <laughs> inevitably, one of them or both of them will say, how many notebooks do I get to fill up? And I'm like, wow. And then I kind of wring my hands like, I'm so excited for this because people have to get in touch with those things that are underlying what that strain or that grudge is about and resolve it. The word unresolved does not feel good to me in any way. And I will tell you, some people talk about, some people have come into my office where there's a deceased person and they're like, I never got to tell them how frustrated mm. I was with things or address the issues from my childhood is, is usually what the case is. And I'm like, you get to do that when they're deceased. You get to still do that. And I will help you do that because well, so people need to be heard. It brings up then three different options, right? There's forgiveness without an apology, which, which doesn't usually... have to be religious, by the way. People associate that with like spiritual and religious like... forgiveness. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that never even occurred to me. It feels For... okay. Forgiveness right, with or without an apology. And those are like two completely different things, right? Agreed. And then there's like resolution. And so resolution you're saying, Doug, is like you can list off the things that feel unresolved, but then maybe let's deep dive for like a minute into what does resolution look like? Like there has to be a true speaking from the heart, a true listening. Like you have to actually show up and hear the person because in my experience, I've found that if there's even the slightest bit of defensiveness or pushback or like, oh yeah, well you, or that's not what happened or, you know, something that's just invalidating, that will never be resolved. A person can apologize, but if they haven't truly heard your complaint and listened from a non-defensive place, and really like even repeat to you what they heard in a non-defensive way, that's the only way resolution can even begin. Yeah. What I, do you think about that? Well, I think it's, I think, I think there's so many layers to that because the person on the other end who is expected to respond, like the question is, have they done their work on themselves? Do they understand themselves enough to, to take in that information and respond in a calm way? I think one of the pieces I've always been struck by in my practice over the course of these decades um, <laughs> is that there's a lot of people who have never said, I'm sorry. There's a lot of people for whom that mm -hmm. those two words are incredibly complicated. And so when we talk about to their self image that if they're sorry, what does that mean? It means they're bad. It means they're wrong. It means they have to acknowledge that they made a mistake or. Absolutely. And so there's shame mm -hmm. about that. Like a lot of people, I would say shame is the predominant emotion that people have about that. And so I think it's really hard to get in touch with that and be okay with it. But I want to go to your comment about like, it doesn't always have to be like acknowledged in some ways. You know, um, as, as many people have heard on the podcast, I had a complicated, complicated relationship with my mother, but I did have the opportunity to let her know what my concerns were growing up and mm. what did not feel good to me and even suggest that maybe she should not have been a mother, despite that I'm grateful for her having give, given birth to me and given me life. Um, and I found my, and my mother just stared at me when I said it and I didn't get like this. I'm sorry that happened. I wish I could have done better. My mother mm. had no capacity to do that. And that was okay because I remember I felt like I was unloading that burden from myself and tossing that mucky ball, I call it. Like when oh, someone tosses beautiful. you a mucky ball, hand it back. It's not yours and give it to somebody else and do not take it back ever again. And so I, I found myself incredibly resolved. I'm like, my mother didn't need to respond, but because she could not respond, that relationship was always going to have a boundary around it and a distance around it because I can't be hurt. I can't be hurt over and over and over. And I can't bite my cheek every time we talk because I'm angry at something, right? So I think that's what Beautiful happens. Beautiful reminder because it's like that's – it is resolution without it is resolution. an apology because you were able to speak your truth. And even though all she did was blink – you could then continue feeling like you could show up as your authentic self and not have to perform or put on airs to pretend that everything was fine between the two of you. I love that. Great example. I also, thank you. I want to, I also want to talk about like how to do something when the person is either unable or if you're in an abusive relationship and you're not comfortable because you're afraid of the outcome. I have a lot of people and it sounds so cliche and so simple, but I have a lot of people write letters 
the letter will never be read by that person, then the letter will never be, you know, you don't have to actually read it to this person, but write a really honest, raw letter about everything you want to say. And boy, it is helpful to sometimes get it out on paper and to get those feelings out and express those things. Because if you keep those inside, that's where that poison and toxic experiences that's going to affect your mood. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get anxious. You're going to, you're going to be stressed out all the time. And so write a letter to the person that you have this grudge with, get it all out and then reread it. And oftentimes there's a pendulum that happens. Like, you know, the, the, the raw letter can oftentimes, if you actually plan to send it, be amended to something that's a little less agitated or rageful mm-hmm. because you've been holding on to this. So I love the idea of like writing letters to even people who are deceased, who you need to talk to and reading it out loud, go to their place of like where they're buried or where their ashes yeah. are or whatever it is, like go there and talk to them, even though if whatever your belief system is, get it out because when we hold on to it, it hurts us most. So part of self-love, going back to that, is about letting people know how their behaviors impact you. Very simple, but very hard. Don't be afraid. And maybe even the tiny little baby steps. Like if if the person's alive, if you're in a relationship with them, but you're not quite ready to have this like big conversation, a little baby step might be, how might this look different if I showed up a little bit differently, so if this is a dance that we have co-created together, even if I feel like this person's being disrespectful and I'm being disrespected, it's still a co-created reality. So if I showed up a little bit differently, what would that look like? Like, how could I maybe get ahead of this? Or how could I stand differently, speak differently, um, you know, request things differently, give them different signs. If they do do the thing, not dance the same old dance we always dance, um, that might automatically shift the dynamic a little bit as well, which is not the direct communication that Doug loves so much. Aspirationally, I adore it too, but I feel like baby steps sometimes are fabulous. Okay. That sounds good. No, let's, let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, that's, that's all great advice. Let's see how that, that comes together. For I'd like next to talk back. more, but I'm going to respect your that, well, I, th- I, I think, think that the Warner Brothers frog just got pulled off the stage with the cane. Yeah. Well, the, you may you may, have, you may be able to bring some of that into this next um, uh, scenario that I also, also deal with grudges. So um, okay. this is this is Ty who's dating Camilla. And wow. he doesn't want to hold a grudge, but at the same time, when she does certain things and he sees her out, he doesn't know how to balance um, not holding a grudge with uh, maintaining self-respect for himself. Mm-hmm. And he thinks that he's very easy to forgive people, but that maybe he can be too easy on them when he should be a little bit more strict in how they treat him. Yes. And, and, and so he, he's trying to balance that. Um, Are there any more details about? Like, yeah, yeah. There, there's a, so, okay, good, good. So his girlfriend Camilla came over to his place one day and accused him of stealing money from her. Ooh, and geez. she was yelling okay. at him, and he basically told her to get out, and she didn't, and just stood there. And then she eventually realized that she was wrong and apologized. And he basically said he you know, he would never do that to her, and was sorry that she felt that way and they hugged it out. But then a few days later he went over to her place and they were chilling. And, um, after some time he, he told her that he may forgive her, but he won't forget what happened. Yeah, that's fair. And that triggered her to have an emotional outburst. And she started yelling again, acting very selfish and she wouldn't even let him get a word in edgewise. So after he left, he called her and tried to tell her in a calm way that not to call him again and that he didn't, he didn't think it was a, the best thing, but he did see her at a party soon after and uh, they saw each other from across the room and he waved and smiled at her. Um, but she kind of gave him a look of that's it. That's all. You're not going to come over and talk to me. And, and so there was kind of a, communication but lack of verbal communication <laughs> at this party and, oh, yeah. uh, and and you said there are many things that he doesn't really like about the way she acts but he does really love her as a human being and she has a lot of positive traits he's just tired of the back and forth energy and he wants to let go and 
try to have some self-respect and he's, it's really hard because he, he feels like he has self-esteem issues that he's trying to deal with. So it, he's just trying to understand how to balance, not holding a grudge with maintaining some self-respect. I mean, I will say like, I'm so glad for the examples because it really does make a difference, right? This is different than like, oh, they keep leaving the toilet seat up. This is like, there, you know, I feel like couples can, for the most part, move past just about anything with good communication and resolution and willingness. However, there are certain things that are really, really hard to get past in a relationship. And it, often like being accused of something egregious really negatively impacts a relationship for a long time. Like accusing someone of having an affair, accusing someone of stealing money, accusing somebody of like sexually abusing somebody or like, I mean, I've, I've heard so or many even of just these. lying, right? That's right. And then it's, I mean, it's so incredibly damaging. I'm actually, I can't tell you how impressed I am with Ty that that is self-respect right there just to, because it wasn't just like she accused him and then he was horrified, but then she like was angry at him for being angry at her and the way that she's handling this. Even when he brought it up again, like, I will forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. I actually, I don't know. I think that's kind of smart because we don't want to have complete amnesia. Even if somebody apologizes, <laughs> we want to remember that that's even like within a realm of possibility. This person once thought this way about you or felt this way about you or questioned your honesty or integrity or like thought that you could possibly be this kind of a person. We don't want to completely forget that. Although I will say if Camilla is like horrified by herself and feels like, oh my gosh, I've got trauma. I've got trust issues. This was so, this is like history here. This was trauma in my past. This has happened to me before. I'm really twitchy. I see red flags where there aren't any. I'm working on it. Very forgivable, right? And maybe well, someday you'll forget. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think what, and there's two things about this for me. One is Ty kind of talked about his own experience of somewhat letting people off the hook too easily. And so the mm -hmm. question is, have you let too many people off the hook over the course of time? And now you've kind of gotten to this place of zero tolerance for bullshit, right? And so Good the question, question is like, what's your past and what it is that brought you to this place of saying this was my deal breaker? Um, I will tell you, like, sometimes what I do um, is I think to myself, what would I do if I were in that situation? If I was dating somebody who said, I think you stole money, I'd be like, what the fuck, right? Like, because it's stuff, something I would just never do. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do that in a million years. I wouldn't know how to do that. Um, and so it just doesn't make any sense. But Talia, you referenced that thing about, like, what her response was. And if Camilla was like, I don't know why I did that. Like, I have this, I have this incredibly difficult past where I have not been able to trust people. My parents stole my money. Um, all of those sorts of dynamics that come into play. If she really owned her shit and knew how to get past it and knew never to do that to you again, I can see where there could be a chance of like mm -hmm. forgiving, not forgetting. I, I want, I 100%, by the way, am a believer in Forgive, but not forget. You don't want to carry anger. You don't want to carry grudges. You don't want to carry rage. Decide what you need to do with that to not carry that ra rage or anger anymore. But you and don't want to be, be blind or have amnesia. Well, no, because, not right. I don't, and I don't know, by the way, I don't know that <laughs> anybody does. I think we really try sometimes. I've worked with people who are like, no, I'm good with that. But then it comes out sideways. It's like, you know, That's smoke right. coming out of their ears instead of their mouth because inevitably there's going to be some behavior that happens where it's it's a result of them not having addressed it directly. I am a person who believes 100% of the time the goal is to be direct about what you feel because the minute you start skirting or the minute you start like giving them allowances or the minute you start, you know, not acknowledging yourself, you're going to run into trouble. It will come out a different way. You'll either have passive aggressivity about, you, you know, how you interact with that person or you'll hold a grudge. Or, you know, very commonly people will bring it up a lot of times. Like, do you remember when you, you know, accused me of stealing money? Like, you don't want to keep bringing shit up. Like, once you've wronged somebody, take responsibility for it. 
change the behavior. And if you don't, it's going to keep coming up in the relationship in a really toxic way. Don't do that. It's not worth it. So Ty, I am also impressed that you're even acknowledging that you're, you're questioning, like, is this the standard I want to live with? And it sounds great to me. And by the way, you do not need to engage with her in any way, shape or form that accommodates her need for comfort in these social settings. You don't need to even be, I mean, if you don't want to be cordial, don't be cordial, be yourself. The goal of therapy, the goal of this life is to live an honest life. It is not to accommodate others consistently or at your expense, which runs into that codependent spectrum, right? Because so I, you want I, I'm so sorry, Doug, go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. That I also really find that when people look back on their relationships and the way that things ended, yeah, they feel so much less haunted and less angry when they feel good about the way that they valued themselves, the way Correct. that they showed up in the relationship. So I do think you should be concerned about that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to feel like a doormat. I don't want to feel like I'm forgiving everyone and they're always walking all over me. So if you're just thinking about when I look back on this, how am I going to feel about the way I'm showing up in these interactions? Trust me, it will help you in the long run. You will be less haunted, less horrified, less disgusted by however these exchanges are. Ty, I will also add that, you know, based on how you initially presented this question to us, it feels to me like you have some maybe self-doubt about your worthiness or deservingness to set those boundaries. And initially, I think it can be really tough to make that change. And I, I'm sure you could wake up in the morning and be like, did I go too far? Was I too selfish? Was I too, you know, the word selfish comes up a lot for people about this. Like, is it mm -hmm. selfish to take care of yourself? Never is the answer. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself, you will not be there for other people. If I didn't take care of myself, I would not be a good dad. I would not be a good friend. I would not be a good partner. I would not be a good therapist. I would not be any of those things. We have to take care of ourselves and we have to decide, you know, anything that depletes us. I always kind of tell people uh, there's this depletion and replenishment model that I use all, oftentimes. If relationships replenish you, great. If they make you a better person, great. If they consistently deplete you, you need to address it. And I think, Ty, you know, getting comfortable taking care of yourself and creating these standards is what I encourage for you. You are worth it. You are deserving of having people treat you well in this life. So it's okay to set this boundary. And congratulations on setting this new standard. Agreed. Proud of you, buddy. Yep. Yeah, me too. It's not easy. You're doing great. I just love these mailbags so much. Keep writing us. We love this. And the issue of grudges, such a big topic. I'm not sure anyone can't relate to it. So, Ty, thank you for writing in. Again, really good work on listening to yourself and responding authentically in this world. It's really the only task we need to do. I wish you the best as you continue to navigate this. And we will see you guys next time. Have a question for Doug or Talia. Email us your questions at questions at renotfine.com. Eligible questions will be randomly selected for upcoming episodes. For details, visit our website at we'renotfine.com. Join us every Tuesday for new conversations, new challenging topics, and fun.